Good afternoon, Quilt Roadies. Thank you for stopping by. If you happen to be a newcomer, I appreciate if you just give us a couple video tries and check us out. And if so, please subscribe. Um, the community here is so supportive. I guess they're so understanding and supportive. We're all about the craft of quilting and stitching and we are enablers so be prepared. <clears throat> Today's video, uh, get some stitching, get some stitching because I'm going to be doing some chit chat before you actually get the quilt shop tour. Today's quilt shop was the last quilt shop that we stopped at in Minnesota and it was in uh, Purim uh, which was a lovely little town we actually had lunch uh, a block or so over from the shop <clears throat> and um, we were able to uh, in that on that day also um, visit another friend of my friend <laughs> Karen's and so I will be posting about her um, creations and her home on the Woolly Mammoth blog. I took pictures. I don't like to video so much uh, in people's homes uh, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One is I kind of want to enjoy it. Uh, and with videoing, you have to concentrate more, um, and you have to move slower, <laughs> which isn't always my forte. And so, um, and I like to be present. I guess that's the thing, is I really want to be present. I've struggled with how to video in a quilt shop. Do I video from the get-go? and then shop afterwards or do I shop first and then video and there's pros and cons to both of that uh, I guess it's just how I'm feeling on the particular day uh, but you are going to enjoy uh, Carolyn's home and her creations um, she lives in a, um, a multi um, how would I say this uh, a homestead that was previously in her family so there's lots of history and antiques and um, it's absolutely uh, so charming and homey and just picturesque beyond belief so you'll see <clears throat> photos of her home on the woolly blog but at the end of this video you will get a walk around uh, a bay uh, bay window quilts in Purim, Minnesota. I already put away what I purchased, so I can't even show you what I purchased there. But I was mainly focusing on hexi fabric. I got Halloween fabric. Um, yeah, it was it, they. It was a nice size shop, and it was uh, two stories and. Uh, the person who owns the quilt shop owned the paint store next door and so you could walk into the paint and pick out paint for your walls if you wanted to uh, but there was a lot a wide variety too it wasn't like um, just one uh, genre of quilting you anybody could go in there and find something that they wanted and the town was charming so we had lunch before we went shopping and it was a, a really charming cafe but I got the shirt there you know I'm all about the coffee I'm all about the coffee uh, and the thing I loved, uh, it had a gift shop as part of the uh, cafe. The tables were what really struck me. is They were handmade tables, cafe tables out of wood. And then they put... Um, let's see. 
yo-yos. <laughs> It was it was there. It was bouncing around my brain. They put uh, 30s, 1930s fabric yo-yos that were sewn into like um, diamond shapes or whatever. They put that on top of the table and then glass on top of that. So charming. I mean, uh, my brain was just going, oh my gosh, I could be doing something like that. It's... Um, very uh, stimulate my our trip to Minnesota and North Dakota was so invigorating that all I have done since I got home is try to accumulate product to do crafts our friend Karen I'm not sure I should thank her because boy have we gone deep down the rabbit hole she didn't want us to be bored, but I'm telling you, we were never bored. We were never, we had one moment where where we were not happy as pigs in a pigsty with lots of mud. But she set up uh, stations and taught us crafts. So decoupage, um, painting, antiquing, beading, making pin counts for a cross stitch. And so it was like all we have done since we got home, the three of us, ha has been shopping for the things that we need to recreate those craft projects. I love Karen. I'm not sure. <laughs> I know that I'm going to go again next year. In fact, when she said, um, I can't, you know, she was looking forward to the next time we came, I said, what's next weekend look like? <laughs> she is so talented. And let me tell you, <laughs> I am now deep down another rabbit hole on top of everything else that I do. But isn't that the way... Um, it's kind of like I, uh, my friend Becky, who is a quilter, is an extraordinary card maker, and I shared with you the card, the pack of cards she made. It's a whole nother craft, and I guess, I guess I'm not going to feel guilty about my rabbit holes. My yard is filled with rabbit holes and each one has a treasure in it. So I'm going to enjoy it. I um, I naturally, like many of you, uh, when I was came back and I was reorganizing and uh, figuring out where things were going to go because now I'm adding other crafts, I started to get that voice in my head that was admonishing what I was doing and I could actually feel the joy start to slip out and I thought no I don't I don't want I don't want that voice this is all creative it it's makes you feel good when you're doing it and you make things that you can give to friends I'm here to tell you, we, I know I have that voice. I know some of you have that voice. But I'm going to work really hard that every time that voice comes up in my head, I'm going to stop and, and push it out. Push it out. Because it's not like I'm doing anything illegal or or uh, detrimental. It's creative and anything I can do creative I'm going to embrace. I got two inches of my hair cut off. Uh, it, it's kind of interesting because two inches um, I feel lighter. Isn't that the way? I feel lighter. And it was so funny because the gal, there was nobody in the shop. Um, 
so I didn't have to wait at all. But like all things, the price was, I went to one of those quickie places, and the price was, um, oh, I gotta answer this. Sorry about that. Um, G has a chip in his windshield, and the windshield guy was calling, and they were trying to determine if they'd have to replace the whole windshield or not. I totally forgot where I was. Oh, well. Let me think. Let me see if I can remember. I can't remember where I was. I tell you, lately, the aging thing is a hoot and a half. I mean, for one thing, I feel like my skin, like I'm going through puberty again. You know, like you get the breakouts, the teenage breakouts again. I just was like, oh, crazy, crazy. But um, it may be, maybe I'll end up repeating myself, but I know many of you will maybe are in the same boat and and are our, our, um I just don't want to do the whole video over. <laughs> oh. uh, so we were in, let's see, back to Purim and back to uh, Bay Window Quilts. So it was a lovely shop. I think I already said that. Um, you'll get the walk around. They have a website, so you'll be able to order from them, which is awesome. Um, and then we visited um, Karen's uh, friend Carolyn's house, who we met last year on our trip to Karen. Uh, her group, she has two quilt groups. They came and gave us a little um, quilt show in her sewing room on what they were working on. So it was lovely, lovely. Uh, I hope that will happen again. Uh, so what have I been doing? Okay. I have uh, gone down that rabbit hole. I told you that I've been buying beads, stationary paper, um, wood blocks, paper mache. Oh yeah, it's bad. It's bad. I um, got a small Christmas tree that's now in the beehive that next year, for those of you who want to uh, stitch along with me, any kind of stitch along, you can go on to Stacy's uh, Buttermilk Basin's website and order any year-long ornament. But what I'm doing is the gnomes, gnomes for the year, and I'm going to hang them on that tree and just leave them up. But she has several uh, year-long stitch uh, projects, so you can stitch along and it'll be an awesome little community we develop. I am planning in the next month to finish. I've been stitching away on the borders of Autumn, which was a um, project designed by her that's absolutely lovely. Um, I'm going to get that done. Uh, my plans for November are not only to get that stitching done, but to start my cousin's baby quilt that I told you about last time. I want to get that one started. Um, I have um, some embroidery that I want to do. Yeah, there's just quite a bit. Um, once you know, once I started organizing, when I got home, uh, when you visit someone else's sewing room, and we visited three sewing spaces, your mind is non-stop. It's, it's reorganizing how you live your crafty life. Since I've been home, I have been doing some decor stuff, reorganizing my workstations, getting excited all over again about projects that I haven't started that I want to start and projects that I've already started that, you know, that need love again. 
it is um, fabulous. Oh, and I know that we were talking about um, that judgy voice in our heads about what we're buying and how much we're going to get done. The thing I came away with from my friend Karen is she seems to embrace the acquisition as another hobby. <laughs> And I know not all of us feel that way. There's some that feel overwhelmed. And sometimes it has to do with how old you are, how you feel, how your eyesight's doing. All of those come, come into play. But I'm here to tell you that wool applique is about the easiest thing to do for anyone with failing eyesight aging hands. It's just um, what I always say when I teach classes about wool applique is if your stitching isn't perfect, it's called primitive. And that's a whole nother art form. So that's where I come from. It's awesome. And uh, one of the um, fun things that happened for me this trip, which is... Um, I finally have everything figured out. In the move, um, a lot of things happen. I had to stop magazine subscriptions. It's um, I still maintain a mailbox in Sisters, but um, it cost me to forward the mail. And now, I don't know about you, but postage is like going through the roof. And so... Um, I I gave up all my magazine subscriptions. Um, I had to know that I was settled here. And um, one of the things that I had a problem with was transferring, because my email um, address on the other side of the mountain, they wouldn't let me keep it. The company, the, the broadband company on the other side of the mountain would not let me keep my email address. So I had to have an entirely new email address. So the things that were attached to that email just kind of disappeared in cyberspace. And one of those was my Patreon subscription to uh, Farm Girl Loves Goats. And I'll put that link down in the uh, description box because she is someone I I um, looked at that Patreon as a magazine subscription because her content is so inspiring and it's so far removed from my life. You know, she's living on a farm, she's raising goats, and she has the, I mean, Henry, I was in love with Henry. Maybe it's because I had lost Enzo and so I was just gaga over her dog puppy that she got, Henry. Um, so I subscribed to that but the email thing got all screwed up so now I have finally got everything straightened out I am on her Patreon site and she has a ton of content on there on how to do crafts all of that stuff Plus, she's now opened an online shop for both quilting and cross-stitching. Oh, yes. I'm telling you, it's eye candy. All kinds of eye candy. But I will put that um, disc, uh, link in the description box. So, she has three tiers of Patreon, which um, people who do Patreon, that's... That's how they set it up. One is a $5, $10, and $25. And you get different amounts of content, depending. Now, the $5 and the $25 is maxed out. She's not taking any more subscribers. But the $10 one is still available for those of you who want to subscribe. And so I immediately got on there when I got back home and made sure that I was on um, because I had lost it because of my email on the other side of the mountain. Uh, 
And so as I was looking at that, it was so much fun. Her tutorials, uh, all of that all of that stuff. And now she has, like I said, she's opened a shop, which is amazing. So she also carries a lot of buttermilk basin patterns. Wool is by far just a lovely, lovely craft to do. Um, your eyesight doesn't have to be <laughs> as fine-tuned as for cross-stitch. Um, or hand applique, um, you know, that old thing about you can't show your threads, you know, that's why I use silk thread. Um, so you're going to enjoy that. You're going to enjoy that. What else can I share with you today? Well, it's, it's going to be rainy. We do get a couple days of sunshine uh, or a break in the rain, luckily on Halloween. Um, I'm really anxious. I'm really anxious to see what Halloween is like here. I worked really hard to build up my trick-or-treating clientele in Sisters. And, I mean, I bought, I went to Costco and bought the big candy bars and, and dressed up Enzo to meet at the door. And the first year I had maybe 15 trick-or-treaters because uh, the neighborhood I lived in was on the edge of town and so not many kids, not enough houses per capita and not many kids wa wanted to walk that far. But over the time, uh, each year I built up a larger and larger clientele because I decorated the house outside and, and I bought the big candy. So I'm kind of sad that those kids might wonder what happened to me. Here, it's a whole new ball game. You know, I don't have any clue. I do know that there's a couple houses on this street that have decorated just like I have. And so I'm anxious to see what trick-or-treating is like here. I mean, you talk about a holiday that's all about the mask. It works. It works. So I am going to be... Uh, anticipating some fun times I hope I got my bag of candy and um, yeah and then and then G said uh, do we get to eat all the leftover candy oh no no we don't want to do that because we don't know what that's going to be like but luckily it'll be a break in the weather then so I just wanted to show you this little thing that Karen gave me. It's a little ceramic pot. I probably showed it already. And it has a wool bowl. A ball? Bowl. It's a ceramic bowl with a wool ball. Say that five times fast. It's perfect for an individual project to stick the needle in when you're um, taking a rest or needing to change threads. So I just love that, that little thing there. Okay, I know I'm going to um, think of something else that I forgot to tell you. Um, but I can't think of it. <laughs> I can't think of it. <laughs> of course, when G says you want to watch this video before I launch it, I probably am going to say no because it's probably all over the place. But I will put the links for uh, the Farm Girls shop the shop in Purim, Minnesota, and anything else that I can think of. I'll try to do that for you guys. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by. Enjoy this, uh, the video of Bay Window Quilts. Lovely, lovely shop. Love you guys. So here I am in Purim, Minnesota at the Bay Window Quilt Shop. Let's go in and take a look at what we can buy.